Hello everyone, this is Ashish Sani from Innovate Yourself. Welcome back to my channel. Once again, I am back with a new topic for you guys to learn and to apply, which is already a part of your Internet of Thing. So this time I'm coming with the topic for Internet of Thing, but that's an advanced feature for your Internet of Thing. And that topic is MQTT, which is your message queue telemetry transport. So this is all that we are going to cover up in our today's session or in other words, you can simply say that this is an introduction session for your MQTT protocol. So what exactly that is, uh, how does it work and why do we need that? So this is all that we are going to cover up in the today's video. So let's not waste time and let's straight forward go to the introduction and let's understand what is this MQTT and how we can use it with Internet of Things. So let's get started. So like I said, MQTT, which is your message queue telemetry transport. This is one of the protocol which we will use with the Internet of Things to have a safe communication. And it also it gives you a vast variety of features, which will be very, very helpful and very, very beneficial for your Internet protocol or you can say for your IoT devices. So this is the reason why we are shifting to this. Now let's start with the introduction and let's understand that what is MQTT first of all. So what is MQTT actually? So MQTT is an OSS standard messaging protocol for the Internet of Things. So this is basically a standard messaging protocol. Like I said, this is MQTT protocol. So it is designed as an extremely lightweight publish subscribe uh, messaging transport this is ideal for connecting remote devices with a small code footprints and minimal network bandwidth so basically what happens is like uh, uh, before starting with MQTT like in my previous videos you must have seen that we have done the internet of thing we have done the uh, communication using IOT with the normal protocol and that was your HTTP protocol which was your hypertext transfer protocol but that was not the lightweight one that was was having a bunch of codes and in fact that was not a small code that's a huge code so that's the reason you can say it will not allow you to have a communication faster so that's the reason we need something that will give you a quick response or you can say in the real time response so that's why we need something that can give us the quick response to publish and to subscribe uh, to the messages like I said publish and subscribe so what is that means so we will understand that in the upcoming uh, slides so this is about the MQTT now let's move to the next slide and let's understand that why do we need MQTT like now we know like what exactly MQTT is this is just a protocol which is very lightweight so why do we need that right so let's understand that now First of all, it's lightweight and efficient. So basically MQTT clients are very small, require minimal resources. So can be used on small microcontroller MQTT message headers are small to optimize the network bandwidth. So basically what happens is like, uh, definitely we are going to have a protocol and that protocol is basically required to uh, for the communication but right now we are not going to make a communication on your normal system laptops uh, or smartphone or something instead we are going to make a communication using the iot devices which is definitely not on your system or something definitely it will be on some of the controllers like your uh, node mcu your uh, esp32 your raspberry pi your raspberry pi pico or any of the microcontroller or microprocessor so we will be using it on that so that's the reason we need something with the minimal resources and with the minimal code so that we can have a communication faster and efficient and just because it is lightweight so this is beneficial for us because that's what we need right next it's bi-directional communication so MQTT allows for messaging between device to cloud and cloud to device. So basically this makes for easy broadcasting messaging to the groups of things. Things basically means your IoT devices. So basically we can do the two way communication, either send the data to the cloud or get the data from the cloud. So we have the option which is your bi-directional and that's what we need in IoT. Next we can scale to the millions of things just because it's lightweight and efficient. So that simply means we don't have to uh, carry the more number of resources. We just have to carry the minimal resources and that is enough for us to have a safe communication. And just because we need minimal resources, so that means we can use the rest of the resources 
for connecting the rest of the more devices or you can say the millions of IoT devices. So that's the reason you can say we can scale it to the millions of things as well, which is your millions of IoT devices. Next, it's reliable message delivering. Now, how we can say it is reliable manage, uh, messaging delivery because uh, in this we have three ways or let's say we have a three quality of services levels using which we can have a safe communication. Now we have the quality of service zero, quality of service one, quality of service two. So quality of service zero is like at most once. So in this what happens is we just trigger the message or you can say we will just send the message to the client and the client will receive the message or not we don't care about that it's just like we just fire the data and we just forget that so this is the quality of service one if you don't want to uh, like have any uh, reply from the client side then you can go for the quality of service zero second one is quality of service one so in this quality of service one what we do is we just uh, send the message and we just acknowledge we just acknowledge that whether the client have received the data or not and it will keep on sending the data until the client will give you the response or you can say at least the data will be sent once other than that you can send the data n number of time but at least the data should be sent one if the data is not sent or you can say if we are not getting the reply from the client side it will keep on sending that until it will get a response from the client side this is how it works and the third one is which is your quality of service too. So in this it's just like we will send the data and we will send the data exactly once. We don't have to send the data n number of times. We just have to send the data once and that's it. So these are the three quality of services which we use. And just because of this reasons, just because of these three quality of services, we can say we can have a reliable messaging delivery based on your requirement you can use any of the quality of service to communicate right so this is about that so it's support for unreliable network so many iot devices connect over unreliable cellular network so basically either you can connect your iot devices using your smartphone or you can say uh, your uh, mobile data or you can connect over the router or you can connect over a hotspot so you can connect over any of that but here MQTT supports for the persistent sessions and it will reduce the time to reconnect the client with the broker. So basically the time is going to be reduced here. So that's the reason you can say it will support for the unreliable networks as well. And the next is security enabled. So basically in MQTT we have just uh, added the security feature which is the most important requirement in your internet of things. So basically MQTT makes it easy to encrypt messages using the TLS and authenticate clients using the modern authentication uh, protocol such as O8 which I think you already know that this is a two step verification process right. So this is how you can say we are making our IoT devices safe as well. So this is the reason why we are uh, opting for MQTT other than any of the other protocol right. So now I think you know like why you should go for the MQTT right. So these are the uh, reasons for that. Now let's understand the working of your MQTT right. So here you can see that uh, here is a diagram in which in between you can say uh, there is a cloud on which it's written MQTT. So you can say this is your broker broker simply you can say this is a cloud server where we are going to communicate right and other than that we are having a subscribe and the publish like I said on the first slide that there are two things one is publish and one is subscribe. So what does this publish and subscribe means? So to make you clear about that, let me give you a normal example. Like let's say you are onto my channel and you have subscribed to me, right? So basically you have subscribed to me just because you want me to provide you some valuable information. So it's like you are a subscriber and you are expecting some data from me, right? So basically in that case, you are a subscriber and I will be the publisher just because I will be providing you that data. So here, this is just a simple concept publisher is someone who will send the data and subscriber is someone who will receive the data right and in between there is a broker which is you can say a kind of a cloud server through which we are going to communicate 
right and for the example purpose you can see here we have the uh, subscriber one publisher one subscriber two subscriber three so in this way we have this thing right now here the publisher is the one who will send the data now we have a soil moisture sensor which will sense the uh, soil moisture content and on the basis of that whatever is the information that will be sent back onto the MQTT server. So in this case if we talk about this publisher 1 and MQTT we can say your uh, publisher 1 is the one who will send the data so this is a publisher and MQTT will become the subscriber in here. So this is how we have the publisher and the subscriber where you can uh, see this. Similarly, we can have the other thing for the automatic irrigation, which is the subscriber three. Similarly, subscriber two uh, and the publisher two. And why we are calling it as subscriber two and publisher two? Just because this is a smartphone and on your smartphone, you can have the two way communication. Subscriber can simply uh, subscribe to the information that we are looking for. And what is that subscriber? Let's say we are talking about this uh, moisture sensor. That moisture sensor is going to collect the information through the moisture contents and accordingly it will send that value back to the MQTT broker and that MQTT broker will further send that value to your subscriber too and that is on your smartphone. So you can see whatever is the content, what is the moisture content of your moisture sensor on the smartphone. Similarly, let's say on the basis of this moisture content, what I want to do is I just want to uh, start the motor. So I just want to start the water pump so that I can accordingly spray the water around the field. So for that, or same thing publisher 2 which is on your smartphone from there i'll send one message or let's say i'll send one request to the mqtt broker so mqtt broker will accept that request and accordingly it will send back to the water uh, pump uh, to turn it on or to turn it off so this is how you can say we have a very simple concept where we have one as broker which is your mqtt cloud server we have one publisher that will simply send you the information and your subscriber who have subscribed for the thing so that it can collect the information right so this is how you can say this is the complete simplest way uh, and the simplest working of your MQTT in IoT right so this is all about the working of that so I hope you have got the information and I hope you have understand the concept of your MQTT and it's working but still if you're facing any doubts and if you have any uh, doubts regarding the working of this you can ping me uh, in the comment section i'll check that and i'll reply you back as soon as possible so this was all about the working of this i hope you have got that now the next is what is the importance of mqtt so basically uh, we have the importance of mqtt in iot to drive efficiency to unlock remote sensing and control just uh, because of this uh, publish and subscribe system and along with the broker simply just because uh, it's very fast it doesn't consume a lot of time so definitely power consumption is gonna be less so uh, this is one of the main reason and this is one of the important factor in this and other than that it facilitates efficient data uh, dis, uh, dissemination so basically you can say this di dissemination means the distribution of your data just because of this reason we can connect millions of devices at the same time and we can spread the data and we can transmit the data in the form of publish and subscribe at the same time so this is one of that and it delivers messages in a timely and efficient manner just because of that uh, quality of services uh, like we have three types of that on the basis of that we can check that we are uh, getting the messages delivered uh, or not or it's uh, going to be delivered timely or efficiently so whatever it is we can uh, see all those things so this is the main importance of your MQTT in IoT right so this is about that now the next is MQTT in action so now I hope you have got an idea like uh, what is MQTT why you should use MQTT and what's the working of that so you have got a clear understanding about that now let's understand where exactly you're gonna use MQTT and where exactly it is being used nowadays as well right so for that MQTT is used in a uh, wide variety of industries and uh, here is a list of them in automotives logistics manufacturing smart home 
कंज्यूमर प्रोडक्ट्स ट्रांसपोर्टेशन ऑयल्स एंड गैस सो दीज आर द वेराइटी ऑफ इंडस्ट्रीज इन विच यू कैन यूज द एम्क्यूडिटी फॉर द सेफर एंड द टू वे कम्युनिकेशन विद द लाइट वेट फीचर राइट सो दिस इज अबाउट दैट नाउ लेट्स अंडरस्टैंड द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ एम्क्यूडिटी नाउ वॉट द एप्लीकेशन ऑफ दैट यू कैन हैव द रिमोट सेंसिंग विद दिस you can make your cities smart so you can add the iot devices all around the cities and you can get the information in the form of publish and subscribe social media platforms so on the platform also you can get everything home automation you can automate your home completely whether to turn on your light turn off the light whether to uh, like uh, move the curtains accordingly as per your control and whatever it is smart farming you can have the smart features like how you do the farming and all right wearables manufacturing and the last one is oil and gas industry so these are the uh, features or the, let's say these are the applications of your mqtt protocol so i hope this information was valuable to you and now you have got an idea what is mqtt why uh, mqtt is used and how it is used or you can say the working of that and where exactly you can use it in your real world so i hope this information was valuable to you and now you have got an idea where you can apply that so but still if you are facing any difficulties in understanding this and if you have any doubts regarding any of the topic uh, that i have covered in the slides so you can ping me directly on the uh, comment session right so that was all from my side i hope this was uh, a valuable session to you but still if you have facing any difficulties in any of the topic you can leave the comment in the comment section so that's all from my side for today thank you so much for watching